Well, I think that they would view me uh, differently depending on the person. Uh, we were supportive, but we were tough and we were aggressive. And I had a philosophy of win at all costs. When we did, uh, the cost was huge. You were ruthless? Absolutely. Fearless? Uh, absolutely. Feared? Uh, unfortunately, yes. You call yourself a terminator in the book, and you write the following. The fear my opponents felt derived from sheer hopelessness. How could they beat someone so tireless, so relentless, so inhuman? So we drove everyone beyond their expected limit. I'll never forget one of the executives that had come from another company came in to see me one night, and he said, I have to thank you, but it was a bittersweet thank you. He said, I'm doing things I thought I never could do. That made me happy. He said, but I'm doing things exceedingly aggressively. That made me happy. But on looking backwards, probably could have been a little less aggressive and accomplished the same thing. You said your image was one you, quote, grew to hate. Why? Because when you walk in a room and you kind of feel the sense that people are fearful of what you might do or what you might say or what you don't say and then do, which was pretty much how we function. Because you could, given well, who you represented. We had the most extraordinary group of talented clients imaginable. De Niro, Pacino, Sean Connery, Meryl Streep, Dustin Hoffman, Stallone, Tom Cruise, Bill Murray, Madonna, Robin Williams, Spielberg, Scorsese. It went on and on. We were very fortunate, but that came out of our aggressive posture to bring in new business. We did change the paradigm about business transfers from one agency to another. The agency business was pretty sleepy until the time we got into it, and clients pretty much didn't migrate between agencies. And we made a decision to be, again, ultra aggressive and go after anyone that we thought was talented. You also redefined the way business was done in Hollywood by virtue of having all of that talent in your stable. You could decide who wrote the film, who starred in the film, who directed the film, what studio got the film. Y you, in effect, were a, a studio. We tried to function the way MGM in the 30s and 40s did, which was to control for our clients their intellectual property and then put those clients together before we went out for financing. We really never went out with anything individually. You didn't see big script auctions out of our company like you did out of other companies. We would take an idea or a piece of material from a writer and we would package it by adding other elements to it. To us, the most important thing was the idea and then the people that could execute it. But more importantly was that we were in a position to take that out with elements around it so that the clients couldn't be leveraged. The leverage had to turn in the direction of the creative people. How could you be all things to everyone that you represented when sometimes I would imagine directors or actors would be perhaps competing or interested in the same jobs? Our thesis was it was better that all creative people be represented by us. And it was our goal to represent everybody that we thought was gifted. If you've got Bob De Niro, Dustin Hoffman, and Al Pacino represented by the same agent, it actually is better that the agents internally can talk to each other about what their desires are, what they want to do, rather than being competitive and trying to beat each other out without any knowledge. And frankly, we never had any conflict issues. The few times that we did, the directors ultimately made the decision of what, who they wanted for a role. We didn't make those decisions.